All right, we should be recording. Actually, let, let me see the file, because I like I like seeing the file. I know I'm weird that way, but yes, I see the file. Yay. All right, we are recording. It's going medieval. Uh, still an early access. Still the key was provided by Tinsley PR for the regular corporation. Um. Yeah. I haven't got much more to say than that. Um. Actually, there's one thing that may be interesting. Mostly, I mean, the fact that it's working fine just now is kind of telling us. Um, so one thing, and I have seen, apparently it is something that Framework is aware of and is working with AMD on. Um, yeah, there. Um, so there's two GPUs in this, the integrated one and the discrete GPU. Swapping between can sometimes cause the screen to hang. Um, which is very annoying. But I've also run into a few times, I'm not, not sure why, um, it will crash, uh, which is quite annoying. Because um, sometimes it's a, I have to control shift Windows B, I think it is, that will restart the graphics driver. Sometimes that does it. But I've also had times where that did not work um, and had to just like forcibly shut down the laptop. Not fun. Don't enjoy doing that. Anyway, what I've done though, for OBS, because OBS does engage the GPUs. Um, I've set that to not be the smart shift, or no, smart switch. Whatever it is where it would go from the internal GPU to the discrete GPU, because when doing that, it will does the pause because it puts everything over to the discrete GPU. It puts the desktop over as well. I've changed that to be hybrid graphics, which I believe is it's technically running on the integrated GPU, but it is um, passing things off to the discrete GPU as needed. So it's trying to act as one GPU between them. This prevents that whole stutter, though, where, where it freezes, because it's it's not actually switching to a different GPU. Um, in theory, though, it is less power efficient, but I set it for just OBS to do this, which is very nice, because then it doesn't have any hitch. So it's like, yay, that's nice. Um, I don't know if... Um, going Medieval runs on the discrete GPU. It probably does. Probably does. So, <clears throat> right now it's just loads in multiple places, so I'm kind of curious. Since making that change, I haven't observed what, what will happen. Um, and I do want to see, is this still clay down here? Yes, it is. Wow. This is going to take quite a bit to get everything out of it. Um, so what have we got for news? Um... Really just two things, one of which is, um, seriously, you guys, you need to be hauling this stuff. I mean, at least it is since I put the flooring down, it's just, seriously? It's that warm down here? Oh, cool. I want it warm so that that stuff is still fine, but I did not realize that would happen. Anyhow, um, that would be that warm. Um brain just partially turned off. Uh, the only thing that that is like tech related that's like, well, actually, no, I can talk about another. I just don't have it in my notes. <sighs> Version 0 0.5 of the PCIe 7.0 specification was shared. Now, now what that means is they're still working on the specification, but they're like, hey, we're at the halfway point, and yes, we are still on track to have this thing finished next year. Um, yeah, and it's, you know, it, it, it's not like where there, there would be a, and I tried to put the, I tried to put this one I wrote up, because I had, I did see some people, like, questioning, it's like, like, wait, are we gonna have, like, USB, the, the stupid stuff that, who's it behind the USB? I don't remember, but the, the group behind them that decided to make every version of USB 3, USB 3.2. So there's th USB 3.2 Gen 1, USB 3.2 Gen 2, and USB 3... Sorry, no. Three, USB 3.2 Gen 1, three, USB 3.2 Gen 2, and USB 3.2 Gen 2 by 2. Which are actually USB 3, USB 3.1, USB 3.2, and the USB 3.2 by 2, where um, it engages the wires... So, when you plug the... The way USB-C works that it's uh, reversible is it has wires on both sides. Typically, 
it only uses one half of them. So you only have the, the like, uh, the female side, so, the, like, the computer side, or your phone. You'd only have, like, the wires hooked up on one side, while the drive would have it on both, something like that. The 2x2 two two has wires on both sides for both, so you can technically have double the throughput because you have double the connections, right? And I could be wrong. It might be that the female has uh, the wires on both sides. It's the male side that would be on, like, your USB-C drive. Um, that's what would uh, have it only on one side. I, I, I'm not sure. It would probably actually make more sense to have it on the female side because you expect fewer of those. Like, it, it, that's an increased cost, but you can spend more money on a computer to have a USB-C port with those extra wires versus having to turn, turn out thousands of USB drives with C in there. Anyway. Um, but yeah, it's they're not... PCI... PCI SIG is not... That's not what's going on. They are... Um, Uh, that, that, that they are just doing their uh, saying, hey, we are still working on this and progress is being made and looks good. But here's the thing that I do want to kind of mention because I think a lot of people don't get this and it's annoying. <laughs> is that um, PCA 7 is not going to come to consumers for a very long time, if ever. We're talking about something that can enable, they mentioned in the press release, 800G Ethernet. So in theory, 800 gigabit per, sec per second Ethernet connections. No one has need of that in the consumer space. In the data center space, oh yeah, there was such a need for that. Um, especially as data centers grow even more powerful, um, AI being get, uh, is being used more and more. Because a lot of data is involved with AI. Um, so it's like, yes, there, it makes sense. But that, y y we're not going to see that coming to, coming to consumer, because no consumer needs it. I'm sorry, but we don't. Holy crap, this stuff is already filled up, although this isn't, but still, wow. Hmm. Okay, well, what they're getting at, we'll be able to go over there, so. Like, with that stored, won't, won't be an issue. You know, I got, I got the space here. Hmm. Okay. Um. I should really try to sell those next chance I get. Um. And hang on. One, two, three, four, five, six. One, two, three, four, five, six. Get the next one ready there. Um, so yeah, I don't, I, I don't believe PCA seven will come to the end. So at least not directly. What it might be is you will see, um, like the CPU having support for it but it being muxed down because the way it's been for PCA for a long time, and I'm pretty sure this is what they're continuing to do is it doubles. So one PCIe seven lane would be equivalent to two PCIe six to be four PCIe five, eight PCIe uh, four and 16 PCIe three, right? Now, PCI 3 is probably actually going to handle basically everyone. Um, I mean, yeah, there's some stuff where PCI 4 would be necessary, but I can't imagine PCI 5 being something any normal consumer is going to ever run into. So that means if you had, say, even 16 lanes of PCI 7, that's what? Eight times more PCI 4? That would be at full speed, potentially? So... Let me see, that's 2 to the 4, 2 to the 3, so 2 to the 7. Yeah, 128 lanes on PCA 4. Because 1024 is 10, 512 is 9, 256 is 8, so 128 is 7. From just 6, so 128 PCA 4 lanes. 
from 16 PC7 lanes. That's a hell of a lot of storage. Um, I mean, think about it. You could have 16 of those go to... Okay, let, let me let me actually pull this out. Okay. 128 minus 16 for a GPU. Minus... Um, what, what would it actually be? I think it might only be two that you would use for Ethernet. Let's give it... Yeah, let's give it another two, so an even four, but two that would go to USB stuff, because I don't think you would use a whole lot of the, I'm thinking about it, it, you're splitting off typically four PCIe lanes that are for the uh, motherboard's um, networking and all of its USB ports, um, and also SATA connections, potentially. Um, but that still leaves 108. That Let's divide that by four. That's 27. In theory, you could have 27 NVMe drives, because typically NVMe is using uh, four lanes. Okay. That's a lot of drives. Okay. And, you know, whether that's by the M.2 connection or uh, U.2 or uh, something else. Um, yeah, I just, yeah, I mostly have goats. Which, I mean, f that's fine. Goats are nice and all, but it'd be nice if I could have some more sheep. Um, but yeah, so it is just, I, I, I do very much believe that we won't see um, PCA 7 coming to anything. Because it's like, I mean, that, that it annoys me that we're PCA 5 and we still, we're still not seeing um, motherboard manufacturers be like, hey, you know, we got, we can do some fun stuff if we just mux down the PCIe lanes. Um, because, I mean, th you, you could double the number of lanes from PCIe 5 to 4. That's a lot of storage. And I'm sure a lot of pe people are being convinced you need fast storage, but I think a lot of people, if you could explain to them, no, you don't, you, you'd enjoy having a lot, a great amount of storage. Like, the difference between a full-speed PCIe 3 and a full-speed PCIe 4 drive, as far as you know, the bandwidth goes, I think most people would never notice the difference. Okay, that they would not be like, oh yeah, I can tell this launches up so much faster because of that. It's like, no, that... I mean, yeah, it might be faster, but it might be like, yeah, it saved me a whole two seconds. whoop to do Um... And I, I, did, I do firmly believe, especially because HEDT had kind of slumbered for a while, it may be coming back since we are getting Threadripper back from AMD and I don't actually remember are we getting the I think it was just the extreme platform from Intel that was their HDT I don't remember um, but there's also that I have I just cannot remember what their HDT platform name was I mean I, I don't recall branding like Threadripper anyway a company like MSI or Aces could have been like, you know what, we're going to start providing HDT connectivity, if not HDT level um, uh, CPUs, by simply, uh, ha, yes, Paul, um, by just being like, all right, we're going to, uh, that, 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 just put in muxes. So now, yeah, you can have so many more drives. Yeah, that sheep is cool. Alright, we have an old male deer. Let's... Because I know I'm going to have to start slaughtering for long. Someone's going to... Oh, I do not want to do that because I only have the two. I've got more females than males. That's actually kind of funny. I, I would just expect this to be a little bit more even. Because it's been long enough that they, they have been breeding. But look at the chickens. Oh, my God. Alright, um... Yeah, legitimately. Is there? No, I mean, they they desperately need to make this filterable. Like, I want to see the chickens at this... I mean, as I've said in other things, it's the whole... We really should just have this be much more powerful, much greater depth. Um, and it just... 
maybe it's in part because in my job I do maintain various databases. Um, so some of that is just my own record keeping. But I've set up special queries and such for generating things out of it. So it's like the idea of, oh yeah, I want to have just all the chickens sorted by age. Yeah, that's very easy. Or set something up where it'd be like, okay, whenever a chicken reaches this age, do this. Um, and like schedule them for slaughter. Um, but it would also be a exclude, well, exclude a certain number of the male and female. Um, because, you know, you don't want to leave yourself uh, without the ability for them to breed to produce more. So there, there would be that. That you'd also need in there. How would I do that in SQL? I'm not sure. I'm I'm honestly not sure. I'm sure. I mean, it's because they I'm not. They might not be doing this in SQL, but I could, would definitely believe there's a way. Or it could just be you know you generate the list, and then always sub. You know, sorted by age, and then like always subtract uh, the two youngest, and that's just controlled differently. And then it's like, okay, so you've got the list of all the chickens sorted by age, and then also filter, you know, sort by uh, the sex. Do that, and then just okay, remove two from the list, and just make it where it's like always the younger two, the youngest two. So that way, yes, they might not be mature, so they might not be able to to breed yet, but it still is. You could potentially do that and manage a lot. Anyhow, um, I want to go through the chickens, but it, it is still just, this is very lousy um, and does need such greater depth. You know, I, I have to just leave that chicken do it this way. Okay. 25 days, 27 days. I have quite a few over 20 days. Um, Then quite a few, oh wow, a lot of female chickens that are mature and even old. Right there, so there's five chickens to slaughter. Um, that should work fine, actually. I really should. Is this... Where is this? Okay. Um... Just, you know, get them wherever they need to be. But, yeah, and part of it, I mean, as I was saying, because of my whole... I do some query stuff in my job. Um, it is frustrating to me then to see where it's um, like, why don't we have this kind of thing? It's like, we really should have this. Really? Don't turn all that off. I don't mind. They can be moved. Um, yeah, but where are they? Okay, yeah, they're just like randomly around. Actually, hang on, now I'm very curious about that. And actually, come on, there we go. I want everything to, all those be stored. Those are very valuable. Okay, I'll just, ha ha. There's a lot that is to say. I don't want that. Um, although now I'm a little curious. What happened? It shouldn't do that. Like, it should be possible to basically say, because this is covering everywhere on the map, it should be possible to, like, the stuff that is forbidden, this does not override that. Okay. There. Oh, 
Oh, this is hilarious. Do you see what it's doing? It's sent out all the animals to pick up the stuff. Oh my god. That is hilarious. That is in no way what I was expecting it to do. Um, okay, I just want to check. Dude, seriously? No, that's not. Um, I know I saw that there was winter. Uh... Okay. So then manage you put on those clothes. As I, so, so let me just check. She she's it, it's the middle of winter and she's running around without clothes on. Wow. Okay. Um who is who is the best at tailoring? Oh, she is. Perfect. Yeah, you do that. And make yourself some clothes. talked out the PCA 7 stuff. I mean, it is, don't worry about it. It is an interesting... Oh yeah, I did want to talk about that. It is an interesting technology. I'm glad to see such development, but it is also the whole... This is, you know, just... It's not going to impact us that much in the long run. Um, it's just going to impact in data centers. And I know some people would be like, oh, but isn't that you know, like when... Uh, was it Bill Gates that said that it's hard to imagine anyone needing more than 600, well, sorry, 64 megabytes of RAM of memory. And it's like, yeah, but it's still, storage is different from bandwidth. Um, come on. There. Now do whatever. I don't care. Um, I mean, seriously, these got these people are so dumb they can't even get dressed. Anyway, um, how are you starving? Oh, because I forced her to do stuff. That's why. Anyway, um, I did want to touch. Well, yeah, just bandwidth is different from storage capacity. Because there's a point with bandwidth that's like, yeah, you don't notice the difference. Um, that's not to say it's not very impressive, the the difference, but it's in kind of a technical way. Um, and it's like, I saw this years ago, when they did, had done a study, they found that for the majority of people, they can't tell a difference in internet download speed once you go above 15 megabit per second. That everything that they do is fast enough. It would only be, uh, like, when you download a Steam game, when you download a very large file, um, you will notice that, oh, it downloads much faster versus slower. But this is something that's not relevant for streaming, by the way, because, like, if a, a file, e even a 4K file that's encoded to be at 5 megabit, having 50 megabit download is no better than 6 megabit download, allowing a little bit of slack there for uh, it being temperamental. It's like there's no difference there. Um, well, people need to kind of recognize that, which it also, like, the whole, because I saw recently, apparently the FCC is going to be voting on net neutrality at the end of the month. It's like, yeah, this is, net neutrality even at the start, it was just a power grab. And it was also about punishing the wrong people in some, in some cases, because net neutrality is not neutral. It isn't. Um, and all you need to know to, to, to be certain of that is a little bit of its history. Well, the recent history for it. I know I've talked about it before, but I'll still go through it again. 
a lot of it, a lot of the anger is like, oh, we have to have this, is because of Comcast and Netflix. So an ISP like Comcast, it will, um, what? Seriously, the dog just ran right away to eat it? I mean, fine, whatever, but still. Didn't need to be that fast with it. Um, anyhow. Although that, to be tr to be fair, that is also probably the reason why I want them slaughtered. Um, <clears throat> uh, so every ISP for especially popular websites will have special servers in their systems just for connecting to them. So, like, what every ISP is, let's keep going with Comcast, they would have special servers to connect you to Amazon, to connect you to Google, uh, to connect you to Facebook, um, just because so much traffic goes there that instead of the normal hop across umpteen different servers, you only hop across, say, two or three. So it's much faster, which both improves the user's experience, but also uh, well, the user that visits, but also other users that aren't visiting because that's less congestion on the servers that are just general everywhere in the Internet. I guess another way to put it is it's a difference between city streets versus a highway especially a highway that goes to just specific places. By having the highway with many lanes, you're alleviating the congestion on those city streets, right? But you have to put in the highway. So what ISPs would do is they'd be like, hey, Amazon, hey, Google, we want to do this. We want you to cut us a check to help pay for it, though. <laughs> like, you know, and, and they, you know, it is a contract between them. But it is still a, hey, this is going to benefit you and your customers as well. Would you help us out? And they would negotiate, obviously, but they would do it. Netflix refused. Netflix was basically telling Comcast, no, you you should just pay for this all yourself. And Comcast was like, uh, n no, we, th th you, you don't get it. We're, we're doing something that's going to help your customers, it's going to help our customers, it's going to help all of our co customers. We, we just want you to help pay for it. And Netflix was like, no, we, you, you should just do that all yourself. It should just be on you. Um, yeah. So, they started complaining. And what Comcast did to try to pressure them was like, all right, we'll start throttling at you because, you know, we kind of, you know, make the point that we need to do that to maintain the health of our network for all of our customers, not just you. And Netflix got all pissy about it and made it very public. And it's like, all they had to do is be like, Everyone else will be like, yeah, we'll work with you to improve everything versus telling you to screw off. And, it, you know, people are like, well, yeah, ISPs, it should all be neutral. Well, let's also be clear, though. If it's neutral, then that means that those servers that allow you quicker access to Amazon, that allow you quicker access to Google, to Facebook, and to Netflix would have to be ripped out. Like, that is one thing I am curious about if any of these ISPs are going to be like, all right, we're going to shut all those off. Because in theory, that's what they should do. Because, like, well, that's not neutral. That isn't. That is preferential treatment. Um, I mean, it, it is, it, it, because an argument can be made that they're throttling everyone else by not having the specialized servers. Ah. It, it, it just would be funny because it's, it would be one of those, oh, we had no idea of how this actually, yes, we know you don't have any idea. That's why you've been pushing for this stuff. As I said, it, a lot of it is just power grab. But here's the thing that makes the whole aspect with, um, Netflix so important. Netflix was throttling Verizon customers the entire time. They were. That was exposed to years later. That if you just had any Verizon IP address, it didn't matter. Because like a lot of people may only associate Verizon with their phones. No. They also do provide landline. And landline data connections. So, it didn't matter. If you just had a Verizon IP, they were throttling you. So, it's not like, oh, well, we're just ensuring you know, that your phone isn't you know, using a lot of data. No. It was a, yeah, we're ins ensuring your, your internet connection in your house is slower as well. It's like, and they were just doing that. It's like, the net neutrality rules, as they originally were, that were eventually taken out, and these, what I saw was saying, it's the same rules that they want to put back in, would do nothing to stop Netflix from doing that. Nothing at all. Because it's only aiming at the ISPs. And it's, and it's also, uh, well, I think it was around the time with the net neutrality stuff, somebody was pointing out that in a different way, that net neutrality targets one group, because by targeting the ISPs, yes, that's how people connect, but it's not how people use the internet. 
Like you could have an ISP that is perfect. But if Google is down, that's a Google thing. But because so many people interface with the internet just through Google, where it's like they search for things, they don't necessarily go, go directly to a website, they just search for things. If Google is down, they might blame the ISP. It, the ISP can be like, well, it's not our service, it's Google's not responding. So it, it, they also make the point that the net neutrality was an issue there because it's like, it's look, it's trying to solve a problem in the wrong place. Or well, potential problems in the wrong place. So, yeah, but I mean, it's... I, I think two things could be said about it also, that the FCC, its commissioners don't have engineers. Like, the, these are politicians. And the fact that so many decisions from them and other organizations do just fall along political lines should really tell you it's got nothing to do with the actual thing you're talking about. It has to do with political power. Okay? Because th that's all they know. They don't know. They're not engineers. They don't know the technology. They don't know the science involved. They just know political power. So, yeah, I mean, it's... But it's also how I was talking about with the, the bandwidth stuff. I, I'm, I think they are also going to try to push that, oh yeah, 50 megabit download is what is necessary to qualify as broadband. It's like, what? I mean, as I already said, 15 megabit down and above is transparent. No one can tell the difference. But they're like, no, no, it has to be 50 megabit. Is it? Like, why? Why are you just compelling places to... ISPs to have to offer that in places that would be very expensive for them to do so. Well, that's the key. It's the money. It justifies a reason to write grants to certain places to spend money in certain places. So it, again, comes back to political power. <clears throat> yeah, it, it's... It's not that I'm cynical. It's that I just understand how this stuff actually... Ha have some understanding of how this stuff actually works. Um... And it, it, it does suck. I mean, th this isn't how you want it to work, but it it is how it works. C can we get that last one? Um, but yeah, I mean, it's the professional politician is a most undesirable creature, but it is also one that is, if not come to prove itself necessary is one that has come to prove itself uh, inescapable. Um, nothing got that I can talk about. I didn't write it up, though. Um, in part because I'm not actually sure how relevant it is in certain ways. Um, but FMPEG 7.0 has been uh, completed. And I'll explain what I mean by I'm not sure how big an impact it may have just yet. Um, but this does include various things, including the multi-threading of the just general CLI. So in theory, much improved performance. Um, one important catch with that, though, I, I need to check speechcraft 8, 10, 8, 5, 13. 13 again. Okay, but you act, you also have an aptitude for it, so we'll go with you. Um, I don't know how... Because, like, if you... I looked, there's currently no version for Windows pre-compiled from the place I prefer. That seems to just automatically generate nightly builds. It doesn't yet have one labeled 7.0. It does have 6.1. It's possible, though, that the latest 6.1 is 7.0. Um, I, I'm I'm honestly just unsure how some of that branching works. It'll be a while before there will be a labeled 7.0, but it is possible that some of those changes are already available in the nightly builds. Can you see my cursor? I think I have my cursor turned off. Good, because I I one thing that is annoying on the laptop, I have been losing sight of my cursor a lot, which is part of the reason why I've got the Power Toys thing installed, and I can if I just double click on um uh. Perfect. On the, um, on control, it'll just highlight. It's very nice, that. Um, okay, I want to just try to find the, the beds. 
Here we go. Because I, I don't need them. I really don't. Alright. Um... So yeah, I mean, in theory, very powerful. Um, that change to it'll make things much more performant, performant. But not sure when it'll necessarily go live. Um, well, except live and accessible for somebody like me who doesn't want to just compile with myself. But certainly, we'll be coming and influencing things in the future. Is there anything of interest? Head scarves and headband. Eh, not so much. It's winter, I don't need ice blocks. I don't think people are hungry enough that I need well, you know what? No. Well except even one pushes it that far. Wow. Um having additional food would not be a bad idea. Let me just see what all is that? Hmm. Actually, kind of like that, because I can just... That's a lot of meals. Um, that can be made that way. Okay, those are all for summer. Yeah, no, that's fine. Um, so yeah, we, we will see what ends up, um, happening with that. And it's also, I'm not, it may help me because some of the stuff I do, there are filters that I'm pretty sure are the, uh, bottleneck for me. So fully multi-threaded there. Oh boy, that can be such a difference. Um. I mean, let me put it like this, to just, re to just reprocess 264, X264, these videos should be going like one and a half to double speed even. But instead, it goes at like three quarters or half speed, depending on the overlays. So multi-threading, and I think that those overlays are, uh, the overlay filter is single-threaded. So if that is multi-threaded, oh boy, that'd be nice. Uh, probably won't be, but I won't work out that way, but yeah, it, I would like that. Um, I would benefit from that. And speaking of the compiling, there was some news of late that shouldn't influence any Windows users, I think. Um, so, I'm not... That, that's probably the reason why I've not been up. Also, I don't fully understand exactly what what's going on, but... Uh, it is very significant. Because it, if nothing else, does demonstrate a... Um, a vulnerability that people generally assume is not real. Um, that may sound weird, but I, I can't explain. So, there's various compression methods, and one of them, uh, XZ, um, well, and various compression methods are also open source, including this one. And XZ, I think, is derived from LZMA. Th there's a few that are technically using that, but in any case, um, yeah, it was discovered that one of the man maintainers, apparently, and I don't know the full story, but apparently one of them managed to get malware into this open source code. And it's not, the way they did it was actually kind of clever in that it basically only appears during compilation, which is not when most people are looking, not when most people are checking. Um, but it, I think it was Red Hat was like, oh, yeah, we're not pushing Fedora at the moment because we need to fix this. Um, and people that... They were actually people that... Because, like, on the nightly release or whatever... Fedora, I think it was Fedora. It might have been a different operating system. My apologies if I have that wrong. <clears throat> yeah, let me actually see if I can pull it up. If I can find this. Because I, I saw it on Pharonix. Which it also just covered because of it being open source. Um, I think that... It was Red Hat... It is Fedora. Okay. Uh, yeah, they issued an urgent security alert uh, because the tools and libraries for XZ had this malicious code in there that would allow unauthorized remote system access. Yeah. 
this is this is very not good and the way it also did it was something that like a traditional antivirus wouldn't even know i mean it was like this is bad and one thing i saw is like trying to explain how this even occurred the maintainer was you know, tried to get it on there and eventually was like able to contribute but wasn't a full-fledged maintainer and at least supposedly one person how they were reporting made it sound like they would then um wait hang on i need to make sure dirt is actually not allowed it isn't they just haven't moved that off um then like made up fake email addresses to tell the primary maintainer hey you gotta you gotta do this you gotta you know you you you're, you're not staying up to date you have to bring somebody new in to um to help you and that got him like to be one of the primary maintainers so he could just do things and apparently somebody else spotted a message from the guy saying hey do you find any you know uh vulnerabilities or malicious code in there be sure to let me know and i can you know track those out. so it was basically be sure to tell me how you found out what i'm doing so that um you know i, I can fix it so no one knows yeah it, it very bad but as i said it, it's um, for one thing, it's just XZ, and they, also they don't—they haven't, to my knowledge, figured out how old it is. And it is so bad. GitHub decided, you know what? We're locking down this archive, this repository, um, which further makes it harder to to fully diagnose when this occurred and all that. But uh, yeah, it, it's not good. Um, who, where was it? Some somewhere decided they're just gonna drop using XZ entirely and use a Z. STD Z standard, which is actually developed by Facebook. I think it is open source, at least partially, um, but it is a newer compression algorithm that is much faster to at least decompress. I think also compress, but it can be comparable in in uh, compression efficiency. So it's actually like you know kind of a good move overall for people to just be like, it, essentially, it is the better technology, and it doesn't appear to have this kind of issue there. But it is just a very interesting situation because it's a terrible situation and is also generally speaking people will say you can trust um open source code because everybody's able to view it except we now do have an example of open source being corrupted like that to be fair though and i don't know it's possible that this is an old enough project that there weren't so many eyes on it um, making it easier to sneak in, and also the way it was done was very clever. Um, okay. No. But. Okay. May have just clicked on the wrong one. There. Um. No, I, I wanted to get that out of it. do that oh cool so that it does wrecking okay so in theory do this everything that shouldn't be here will get moved which is mainly just dirt okay that works i should see about putting in a ramp or something so the animals can get down here too um But yeah, so if you're running Linux, you may want to make sure that you have seen what security lists there are. And also, like, Ubuntu decided, well, Canonical, Canonical, the maintainers for Ubuntu were like, yeah, we're delaying the release of uh, this month's Ubuntu release so that, I mean, they, they are actually recompiling all their packages. <laughs> um, because some of them may include this stuff. And it's like, yeah, we need to, we need to not allow that. Um, it, 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 as I said, it is big, but I don't think it impacts anything that isn't Linux. Um, so Windows should be fine. But yeah, it, it's... It will be interesting also to see what comes as far as... Um, trustworthiness of open source software. I mean, one thing that I was kind of... I, I wasn't fully aware of, but... Something else that happens is... If you're going to download something from GitHub, make sure you can trust that source, trust that repository. 
because what some people do is they just fork, uh, they make their own clones of, they make their own forks of various GitHub repositories, and then insert malware, hoping that you are just fooled into thinking that's the right one. And this is actually, GIMP, I'm pretty sure, is actually one example of this, sort of, in that for a while there was actually, like, this, man, I want to make sure I have it right. So I'm just opening up GIMP to, and I'm going to just, through the GIMP software, open up the website, because it's like, th there's GIMP.org and GIMP.com, and one of them actually is, or at least it used to be malware. I just don't remember which is the legitimate site and which isn't. But that's why I said I'm just opening up GIMP, because it obviously will have the correct link inside of itself. Um, the main website... Yeah, GIMP.org is the legitimate one, because that's... GIMP itself opens you to there, but GIMP.com is an actual site. Um, yeah. <laughs> so it is just in you know, one of those... In you know, like that, I'm going to that software... I'm using the software directly to get the thing. Um, obviously, that's not an option in all situations. Uh, like, if you don't already have the software installed. But it still is... Um, you... Do what you can to make sure you are looking at the right thing. So... Uh, I mean, I guess, you know, for GIMP, one way to do it... Aside from just... I just went to GIMP.org. That is the correct one. Um, there's Pharonix... Uh, that, you know, they do open source news. If you go there, search for GIMP, they will, they should have one that is, um, there will be news. Okay. It's a little weird. There, um, oh, that's not how I wanted it to work. I've not actually used a search on GIMP before. But if you could find, like, the, the news, uh, yeah, news item concerning GIMP on Pharonix's site, they're going to include the the thing. And Michael, the guy who runs Pharonix, he's been doing it for years. He would make sure he has the right link. Um, similar with FMPEG. Um, you know, it's basically, you know, trusting first-party sources. It is, is, um, the trick is... Making sure you're seeing the first party and not not some uh, somebody trying to impersonate. But yeah, it, it I do not know what will end up happening. It'll just be interesting to see what does happen. Okay, growth halted for low temperature. I figured that. Yet it would be nice if they told me what temperature they need because it's like here, these guys are fine. I mean, the sunlight is a problem, but the rest is fine. I kind of wonder. Like, is it because of that wall? Because, well, if that were the case, then these should also be stunted, but they're not because of this wall. And it certainly is more sunlight as you go to the center. Wait. It's stunted, but it's 52% sunlight, where... I, this makes no sense. I... Yeah. Um... Yeah. Alright, well, how long have I been going? Okay, yeah, about 50 minutes. Um... Alright, I'll just save at the next... Auto-save at the next night. Um, so yeah, so that's... It's clear. Animals are hungry. I know, I know. I probably can slaughter some more chickens. Although, let me try looking through the goats. Because in theory, that I've got... I've got plenty of goats as well, so... There should be some that... Can be... Uh, two years? 33 days? I got plenty of males, so yeah, we can slaughter those too. Plenty of females as well. Okay, 24 days. 15 days, okay. Okay. 
Oh, yeah, those are the pets, so they're, they're out and about. Which actually makes me wonder then. So if I come here... Oh, wait, no, no, resource. There. There, so that was all four, so they will be uh, hauled off accordingly. Um, so last thing I want to talk about, and coincidentally I got a thing that I can look to for some of this. Um, seriously? Oh, okay, so that... Okay. Sorry, just a, a thing from MIT on their RSS feed. Q&A, tips for viewing the 2024 Solar Eclipse. What, question, what should viewers expect to see and experience with the Solar Eclipse? Answer, when you're watching TV, the sun, in, in, in parentheses, and your toddler, dog, or other large mammal, the moon, blocks your view, you know that to move over a bit to try to get a partial or full view of TV. It's like, why is this what we're going with? I'm sorry, it just... That just reads so much to me. Like, I'm assuming who's ever reading this is an idiot. Um... Mainly, I just want to, yeah, it's like, um, uh, okay. Yeah, so that, that is the viewing stuff. That's what I want to know. Okay. And that also I want, I want to check on. So basically... With the eclipse on Monday, the sun is real bright. Don't look at it unless you have the proper uh, eyewear, and make sure it is properly rated. I mean, if they're talking about the ISO certified filters, um, which I've got two sets of glasses where I'm going to be going. I'm going to be going to my uh, alma mater. Uh, the physics department is doing so some stuff there for it. Um, I've been active with the physics department since I graduated. I'm actually involved with different things there, so it makes sense for me to go there. Um, but it's like, I'll be able to get more there as well. But I also do have a solar filter for my camera. I won't be doing that. I'm actually gonna let my dad do that. Cause that way you can do it here instead of going into the city where there's gonna be a lot of people. Yeah. It's just gonna be easier to let him do it. Um, but yeah, it, it's when looking at the sun, you gotta make sure you have the right, right eyewear. So it's safe. Um, and that also goes for your cameras, including your, your phone cameras, the sun will burn out your uh, sensor on there. In fact, my dad also shared something with me. We, there's a local... I don't remember the name of it, but... In various areas, there are camera shops where you can also rent equipment. And at a, they shared how some equipment came back that they rented during previous solar eclipse. And how not only were the sensors burned, but also the lenses, parts of the lenses, like the iris in there, that stuff was being melted because of the intense light. Um, yeah. So that that you definitely don't want having to your eye, but it is. I, I will not be surprised if during next week a lot of people start talking about, hey, I can't take pictures with my phone anymore. It's like, yeah, you killed it. Um, there are filters that you could that do exist for going onto your phones, but yeah, it's no, no, don't don't. Don't do that. At least for the sun. Now, it does point out here, during total totality, the sun is sufficiently blocked that you can look at it with your naked eye. But once totality is done, and that lasts for a few minutes, put them back up. So it's also like with uh, the solar filter on my camera, my dad will have to take it off at that time and then put it back on so the sensor is not destroyed. And considering it's a $1,000 camera, I really don't want it destroyed. Um... Do, do, do. Okay, I'm just now looking at the question. How does Eclipse Photography work? Uh... And MIT does also have... Here are some examples of solar damaged cameras. I don't know if that's what I would convince, but 
it does say that you can put an extra pair of solar glasses over the camera on your phone. I'm not sure I would trust that. Uh, they do also say you could tape them so the same place. It's still, uh, that's not idea. I get that that should work, but... Mm. Um... It does... I'd seen one thing suggesting that basically once the, um... At totality, just like how you can use your naked eye to view it, uh, you should be able to take the filter off. They're not mentioning it here, which is kind of the thing I want confirmed, but... Uh, <laughs> that's actually kind of funny. For cameras with larger lenses, which would be like mine, um, you can buy cardboard filters that slide over the front of your camera, and I have seen those where it's basically the same Mylar-like material of the solo glasses that I've got. Uh, that would go over there. Um, but you can do that. Or even buy ISO-proof solar film and make your own. Or you can do what I did and bought a Tiffin filter. <laughs> that it's like it's a neutral density uh, filter that it simulates adding an extra 18 stops to the, the shutter. to the uh, Not the shutter, but the, the camera. So it cuts down like that much. And the minimum, when I was looking at things, uh, the minimum is actually 16 stops for solo photography. So this at 18, yes, it is taking out a bit more, but it also means that I, I, I have safe, a safe distance from the minimum. Um, unfortunately, I'm not seeing anything there saying that you should be able to uh, take pictures during totality. But remember, totality is only for part of the country. Like, the... the well, part of the path will be in totality. I actually do live where we will be in totality. We're in that range. Um, the partial eclipse, no. You can't take a picture of that. You can't look at that directly. So that's where you're a bit further away. That will You're still looking directly at the sun for some of that. Uh, so yeah, that not ideal. Um, but uh, here it'll be different. And oh man, it's going to be interesting how many people come into the area for this. Just how crazy it might get. I mean, as it is... Uh, my alma mater, my, my, the university I went to, they're not going to have in-person classes that day. I think... Well, no, I know they're not having in-person classes that day. I would not be surprised if a lot are just canceling the... A lot of teachers are just canceling the class anyway. And the physics department definitely would, so their professors can take part in the event or not. Um, and I also have one friend there who um, is a student, but I was like, yeah, I'm probably... It, She's working at a physics degree, and she's like, yeah, I'm going to take the day off. I'm going to spend it with my family. Why would I come in unless they need me? So, yeah, I mean, it's... Uh, it will be interesting how many people decide to just, yeah, I'm going to stay home or at least go somewhere else, because it is weird. It's like, it's a downtown campus. Downtown with tall buildings and skyscrapers. Why would you all go there? Especially because, I mean, it's like half an hour in the right direction, and you're in suburban area suburban areas with shorter with shorter buildings, larger parks. We also have the metro parks for Planet Loud. Um, and then you can go like another half hour and you're in straight up more rural areas, or at least more rural, the more rural side of suburbia, uh, of suburban areas. It, you're going to have a much easier time viewing things. It's like you might have trees in the way, but that still might be, it might be easy to find a patch, especially if there's roads. Then it might be easier to find a patch there that you can see the sun than uh, see the eclipse than downtown. But at the same time, though, it's the whole. It's, like, it's Cleveland that I nearby that I live nearby. A lot more people have heard of the name Cleveland and can find it on a map. Whereas uh, I think Elyria is one of the places that's to the west that has that, that will actually be a bit better for totality, and I don't think it's as developed. Like well, certainly not downtown Cleveland. Um, but it's like, how many people are going to be able to have heard of Illyria or would be able to find on a map? They can't even find Cleveland, though. So it is one of those weird things where, um, so sort of just the name recognition, we're probably going to have a lot of people in Cleveland, even though Illyria could be better in various ways. But, uh, yeah, so it is just, you know, if you're going to view the eclipse, make sure you do it safely. And there are many resources that you can find. NASA has them, MIT has them, as I was just reading off. Um, yeah, so it, it's... And also, depending, there's going to be plenty of local news that you can also uh, 
go to their websites or whatever, and they will be telling you stuff. Uh, science centers as well. If you ha We have a few in the area. We have Great Lakes Science Center. We also have, because we have the Metro Parks, um, they have science centers as well. That I'm sure they're doing some stuff. I don't know for certain, but I, I'm sure that they do have some stuff there. The Great Lakes Science Center I know does because, is doing stuff because they are in Cleveland. Um, so definitely directly, directly under totality, but it's also for a while the NASA Visitor Center for, uh, Glen NASA Glen was actually at the Great Lakes Science Center because for a while they shut down. NASA Glen used to have their own visitor center, but they shut it down. I, there was a reason why I don't remember what it was. Um, so they basically moved it all over there. NASA Glen is more open now. I don't think that they fully opened up a visitor center, but even then they wouldn't shut down the one at the Great Lakes Science Center. Um, yeah, and one thing I guess explain the Metro Parks a little bit because some people might not understand what that is. Basically. We do have, in northern Ohio, it's certainly in Cuyahoga, but I'm, it would go through other counties as well. Essentially, the metro parks are an area where, yeah, no, this is rural. Well, this is raw land, I should say. It's not even rural. It's raw land. Um, there, are, there are some roads for people to drive through. There are some, you know, uh, paths for running on. There are some spots that they do have that they have, you know, cleared out to make, like, fields and such, but they basically are a massive park that is more raw than engineered. Um, and there are also spots for, because Cuyahoga River goes through there and some other rivers, um, where they, you know, it's built up some to, you know, just help maintain that, help control that, and you can't, I, I don't, I'm pretty sure you can't fish in those rivers, but it is basically just a, a conserved area of uh, raw land. And part of the reason why I feel like mentioning that is you don't have that in, in too many other places where it might not be as conserved. It might just be there, but it might also be not protected. Like, I mean, you, you can't do certain things in the Metro Parks because it is the Metro Parks. But it's also some people, like uh, with New York, I, you've probably heard of Central Park. You've not heard of the Metro Parks. The, you've not heard of the Metro Parks. Central Park is engineered. That actually used to be, um, uh, the, the, why can't I? Thing in the term, but it's like they were actually homes and such there. But somebody had the bright idea that we should try to invent nature within New York City. And then they bought up the land, some of that not the most ethically, and basically forced a lot of people out, leveled it, and then built up everything there. It's all unnatural. It's all engineered. Um, I mean, I've never visited. I don't doubt that it's still a beautiful place, but it's still one of the whole... That's engineered. The Metro Parks are not. Um, I mean, some sp some parts of it, yes, have been engineered, but that's to help people be able to go there and enjoy things. Like having large soccer fields there. It's a way to get you know, people to come there and basically be in the nature there. Um, but also a lot of it, like the running paths, yes, so you can more comfortably run or bike. But it's still, you're going by trees that no one's ever touched. And it, it's not a person that planted those. That's where they fell. Well, that, that, that's where the saplings and such grew naturally. I mean, it's it's really neat. Um, and also, of course, you know, there's the wildlife there. Uh, certainly deer. I know foxes because I've seen some of those coyotes. Wait, is it coyotes? I don't quite remember. Pretty sure we do have wolves in the area, though. Uh, they tend not to... I, I've seen a fox actually in where I live, I, which is a distance from the metro parks, but they do explore... Um, but yeah, and it's just, it's a great, it, it, it's a great place, but is, um, just, I felt like explaining that because I, I can believe that some people don't have an equivalent to the Metro Parks. They may have, you know, just, you may have just raw land nearby, but it might be just, yeah, it's just land that no one has gone there to develop it versus, no, no, we, we are specifically conserving this land. It's like, we, we are doing some things to it. Yes, there's some development there. Like I said, the roads and parks so people can go through it, people can enjoy it uh, more easily, but it's like that that's the purpose of that that human touch. It, it is not um, it's not something else, uh, which is different from just straight raw land where there would be no touch yet, potentially, um, and certainly completely different from uh, Central Park, which is just completely engineered. So, yeah. Okay, that has been more than enough of my blathering, I'm certain. Um, so yeah, I will get this done. I'm just trying to think if there's anything 
Anything else to mention? Nothing coming to mind from the news specifically. Um, hopefully those of you that, you know, do have the ability to view the Eclipse, enjoy it. Um, maybe if I do get some good pictures, I, I don't know. <laughs> or rather, if my dad gets some good, good pictures, I'll try sharing those next week. We'll see. It, it really does depend on a lot of things. Um, it's possible we won't have good enough weather. Fortunately, in NASA and plenty of other places, it's going to be like live streaming it from, from various observatories. Um, also, another thing about my camera, technically, you want a, like, zoom lens or telephoto lens. Um, I don't have that. <laughs> so the sun will not be that large, but it still is something that's going to be kind of neat to, to see. So, uh, yeah, we'll just have to see how that goes. Just, you know, make sure if you're watching it, do it safely. Just be safe with it. All right. As I said, more than enough of my blathering, so I shall see you next time.